Hey boaters, it's Thursday night. This is Ray Marine Live. Thank you for joining us this evening. We got a really cool show for you tonight. I have a lot of stuff to share with you. As you know, we are freshly back from the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, where we debuted a brand new radar product. As you can see over my shoulder here, we have the Cyclone Open Array Radar in studio. So tonight we're gonna to be talking uh, about all things radar. We're gonna include some Cyclone content in there, but I'm also gonna have some different tips and tricks you can use on just about any Raymarine radar system to help you make the most of your time out on the water and become a little more comfortable operating radar. A radar is a super useful tool to have, especially if you are running day and night. If you find yourself out in heavy weather or in fog or even just in heavy traffic, it's a great tool to have at your disposal. I will say the best way to get to know your radar is to actually run it uh, every time you go out. Don't wait for it to be dark. Don't wait for it to be foggy. Uh, don't wait for heavy traffic. Uh, turn it on when it's a nice day, when you can actually see the targets that with your eyes that you're seeing on the radar screen. It's a great way to learn how to interpret what you're looking at um, and really get a feel for it and build some confidence so that when you really do need it, um, you are confident and can run in all conditions. So let's uh, talk a little bit about Cyclone, our new Chirp Pulse Compression Open Array. So you might ask, well, what is Chirp Pulse Compression? The word Chirp, you've probably heard before. Uh, we have been making Chirp Sonar products for quite a while here at Remarine. And what Chirp signaling is, is when a device generates a signal that is going to broadcast rather than sending out a single frequency tone or a single frequency pulse, a chirp system actually sends out a sweep of frequencies. If you could actually hear it with your ears, a chirp sonar or a chirp radar would actually sound kind of similar to a police siren. It actually has a whelp to it, kind of a whoop, whoop. I know you're all laughing, that's all right. So if you could hear it, that's what it sounds like. And what's really cool about that tone is if you could see it with an oscilloscope, it actually looks like uh, a slope as it goes out. Um, when we send out one of those tones, either as sonar or radar, it bounces off of a target and then is reflected back to our receiver. Now the advantage of sending out a sweep like that or a uh, sloped uh, signal is that when the reflection comes back, it's the mirror image of what came out. And that allows us to very, very precisely measure the start and stop of the signal coming back. So we can very precisely determine the distance to the targets that it detected. Um, so chirp pulse compression in a sonar allows us to see, for example, individual fish in a bait school. Um, it allows us to see tremendous amounts of detail over a wreck. When we take that chirp pulse compression technology and we put it into a radar, it does a lot of the same things for us. So when we are passing down a channel and that channel is marked by very tightly gated buoys, we can see the buoys individually. When we pass by a marina or an inlet, we can actually see individual boats side by side in the slips of the marina. Um, when we go down a rocky coastline, we can see all the nooks and crannies of the coastline because that chirp pulse compression technology can break all of those individual targets, those individual pockets and crevices and rocks and things that are sticking up um, as individual targets on the display. So we're going to show you some examples of chirp pulse compression uh, in some different videos that we recorded recently, uh, and I think you'll really be impressed with the results. So you might wonder what radar systems actually have this chirp pulse compression technology. Well, of course, our new Cyclone does, uh, but also our Quantum and our Quantum 2 radars also use chirp pulse compression. So if you have one of these radar, uh, radome scanners, like I have over my shoulder, those also benefit from chirp pulse compression technology. So what makes a Cyclone different from a Quantum? Well, um, the first thing is it is an open array radar. So as you can see over my shoulder, it is physically larger. So anytime you're shopping radar, and if you're trying to um, discern what the differences are between radomes and open arrays, know that with an open array radar, um, the additional size of its, uh, of its antenna array, which is that bar that sits across the top, is actually used like a lens, and it does a couple things for us. When we are transmitting energy out of the radar, 
the length of that antenna array helps us to focus the outgoing microwave energy. So the longer the antenna is, the more precisely we can focus the energy going out. When the radar is receiving echoes coming back, the size of the antenna actually impacts um, the sensitivity of the radar or the gain of the antenna. So with a larger antenna, we have more surface area, we can actually collect more signals and weaker signals and process those inside the radar. So open array radars always have a performance advantage, advantage over radome just because of their physical size uh, characteristics. Um, so what else does an open array radar do for us? Well, it certainly looks cool as it rotates around up there. Um, and Cyclone uh, certainly has a look that is very unique to open array radars. Um, the style and design, you know, our engineers and our designers really started with a clean sheet of paper. Um, they wanted to come up with something that not only looked great on board modern boats, uh, but performed exceptionally well. So all of that shape uh, that you see and all those curves in the Cyclone product are actually um, chosen on purpose because they're very functional. So one of the things we wanted this system to be able to do was to be able to perform at wind speeds up to 100 knots. And you might say to yourself, well, gee, when do I go boating when there's 100 knots of wind? You know, when, when the wind's blowing like that, I'm, I'm gonna head for the dock. Well, a lot of boaters, particularly bo owners of high performance power boats, high performance center consoles, um, some of those boats nowadays can do 70, 75, 80, maybe even more. Uh, even faster speeds all on their own. So they're generating a lot of wind just when they're running at full tilt out to the fishing grounds. So it doesn't take a whole lot of natural wind on top of that to get you up in the vicinity of 100 knots of wind. So with an open array radar, because it is large and it has to spin, um, the wind resistance can be a challenge for a lot of systems. Uh, Cyclone has best in class performance here. It will actually start and operate in 100 knots of wind. Now, another class of customers that need that capability are first responders. So our US Coast Guard, police, fire, other um, emergency responders, they don't have any choice but to go out when the weather is nasty, when the wind is blowing. And of course they need their radar capability in high winds and heavy sea states. So Cyclone is designed with those types of folks in mind as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the different sizes that Cyclone comes in. So um, the one behind me is a four foot antenna and that's kind of the standard open array, if you will, that everybody has out there on the market. Uh, it's a 48 inch antenna, um, but we do offer it with a three foot antenna um, and we offer it with a six foot antenna. So that gives you some different options depending on what level of performance and sensitivity you want. Uh, but also what types of physical constraints you have on board your boat. Um, a lot of anglers sometimes are interested in an open array for bird mode, and we'll look at some cool bird mode shots later tonight, uh, but they might not have the room for a, an open array antenna. Well, with that three foot option, we can get Cyclone onto some boats that are considerably smaller than could typically take an open array before. Um, another thing about Cyclone is it's actually a lot lighter uh, than other radars that we have offered in the past. Um, the Cyclone with a three foot antenna comes in at about 51 pounds versus 70 for the prior generation Magnum radar. Uh, so it is a considerable weight savings, which again really comes into play on smaller vessels, uh, high performance boats where they're really trying to shave uh, weight off the system, but have a high level of capability. This is a pretty cool uh, product for that. So um, on the workbench in front of me, I have spread out here a bunch of the different things that come with a Cyclone system. And I just thought I would kind of show those to you real quick for anybody that is interested in this product. So it comes uh, packed in two boxes. Uh, one box has the array and the array is the top part here of the Cyclone system. So it actually separates its four bolts that hold it on. The other box has the pedestal, which is the base unit. So basically the arms that bolts up here. Um, and the base, and then all the rest of the bits that are laid out here in front of me. Um, when you first unpack your Cyclone, this big yellow thing is actually just a protective cover that is uh, bolted into the top of the pedestal. And that's just to protect all the connections to prevent uh, water, dust, debris, or whatever from getting down in there. Uh, so it keeps the connections all clean and intact until everything is installed. Um, these holes on the top, 
um, uh, go through to some of the bolt holes that hold the array on. But when you take this thing out of the box, what you're actually going to see in those holes are these lifting rings. Uh, so these are some steel lifting rings that are included in the set. They're pre-installed at the factory, and this allows the riggers that have to lift that radar up onto your radar arch or up onto your cabin top, wherever it's going to go. Gives them a place to uh, tie off um, their harness uh, so that they can lift this thing safely. Uh, so you will see that uh, in the box. This thing in front of me is called a VCM 100. And actually, let's put this up on the product camera so people can get a better look at it. So this is called a VCM 100. Uh, we have offered something like this before with our open array radars. VCM stands for Voltage Converter Module. And what this basically does is it takes the 12 or 24 volt DC power on board your boat. It bumps it up um, to, I believe it is 36, but maybe 42 volts. I don't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, it bumps the voltage up because... Uh, the radar, um, by, by bumping the voltage up, we can um, basically pass more current up to the scanner easier uh, through a smaller cable. So this helps to cut down the size of the radar cable, um, gets the power conditioned uh, as well. Um, so the radar actually ties in um, on the connections here um, and the boat's uh, main electrical power uh, will feed into the VCM and then a, a network cable comes down off of the scanner. Um, so this is tucked away somewhere, usually out of sight, out of mind. Once it's installed, you never have to do anything to it. Uh, but this is called a VCM, a voltage converter module. Uh, so what other kinds of things are you going to find in the box with your Cyclone? This is kind of an interesting one. Uh, this round rubber seal is actually called a gland seal. Um, on the bottom of the Cyclone pedestal is where the connections are for power and Ethernet, uh, Raynet, high-speed Ethernet. Um, and this gland seal sits in the bottom of the radar and actually seals the bottom of the pedestal against the mounting surface on the boat. This prevents you from getting water down inside your mast uh, or down inside your cabin. Um, so this squishes down nice and tight against whatever surface Cyclone is mounted to and seals the water out. Um, one of the design uh, things we integrated into Cyclone is the ability to run all the cables out of the bottom of the pedestal so they can be completely invisible. It's a... Uh, sort of a invisible cable installation. Uh, but if you do need to run cables out the rear, you can do it. And you can see the gland seal actually has accommodations to run the cables out the back. You can see those little, little holes in it. Um, but that's what this piece is for. Uh, those are those lifting rings I was talking about earlier. So those will just be kind of a one-time thing. They're screwed in until they lift it up in place and then they will remove them. Um, and when they bolt the system together, they will use these bolts that are included. So there's four of these. These are actually what hold the array onto the pedestal. Another thing we include to use with all these nuts and bolts, um, all of our open arrays for many years have always included a tube of this stuff. It is called Denso Paste. This is an anti-seize lubricant. So you can put this on all the threads um, uh, for all of these bolts that go into the radar and into the pedestal. So they help to prevent the nuts and bolts from getting stuck over time in the salty atmosphere in which they are going to operate. It also helps to prevent corrosion. Uh, so we do want you to use this and you'll find directions inside the kit. You'll find another pack kind of similar to this. These are the mounting studs that actually hold the pedestal to the boat. Uh, so these thread into the bottom of the cyclone pedestal. There's nuts and uh, washers in there as well to secure it. Um, another very interesting thing that we pack in the box with cyclone. This is something new. Uh, so many of you are familiar with years and years of Raymarine maroon or Ray maroon as we like to call it. Uh, but we've noticed a trend in the style of many boats. Um, we see a lot of customers requesting black decals for their Raymarine gear. So we do include a full retrofit decal set in the box with your Cyclone. So if you want to take all the decals on it from Raymaroon to black, uh, they are included in the kit. Of course, you're going to have some documentation in there as well. So here's your warranty registration decals. You want to hold on to one of these, keep it in a safe place because that gives you your model number, serial number, all that sort of stuff. Um, there is a mounting template. 
Uh, it's important to note that the bolt pattern for a cyclone is exactly the same as the bolt pattern for a magnum and for uh, basically all of our radars that we've been selling for about the last 20 years. They all have the same bolt pattern. So anywhere that you previously had a Raymarine radar, you can put in a cyclone. And I think that pretty much accounts for everything here on the desktop in terms of what's in the box. Oh, with one exception, uh, I wanted to show you the cables. So Cyclone actually is a two cable uh, setup. Um, so one of these cables runs from the VCM 100 up to the antenna to deliver power to it. This is the power cable. It is a three pin power connector connector. It does have a white jacket on it. So in the event that in your installation, it is visible, it blends in nicely with your boat. Uh, the other cable is a Raynet high speed ethernet cable. It's a multi-pin uh, there. Um, this is just like all the other Raynet cables that we offer. It's just much, much longer. This is a 15 meter cable set. So about 45 feet of cable um, with both of these. Um, they are watertight uh, connections. And again, they plug into the bottom of Cyclone um, so that you can do that invisible setup. They'll run them up through the cable gland, plug them into the bottom of the radar. So 15 meter cables are included um, in the Cyclone kits. We do have uh, shorter cables available as well um, if you need that. Um, I think we have extension cables too if you need to go longer, but 15 meters is usually adequate for most people's purposes. So um, the last thing I just wanted to talk about is compatibility. Uh, so Cyclone works with all Axiom series products. So you can go all the way back to the original Axioms, uh, Axiom 7, 9, and 12. They work with all the Axiom Plus 7, 9, and 12, Axiom Pro 9, 12, and 16, and Axiom XL 16, 19, 22, 24. Um, those all work with Cyclone. Um, the one thing you will need to do with any of those products, if you are receiving a new Cyclone, you will want to update your software. Uh, before the end of this month, we will release Lighthouse 3 Havar, H-V-A-R. Havar is a resort island off the coast of Croatia. Um, pretty cool place. You'll see some pictures of it when we do our release for it. Um, if you're over there in Europe, certainly an awesome place to cruise to. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, as you know, we name all of the lighthouse releases after boating destinations around the world. So that was our choice for the letter H. Uh, you'll see that before the end of the month, probably within about two weeks, um, cyclones are actually, believe it or not, in stock in our warehouse and they will ship sometime this month. So if you're lucky enough to have one on order, you should see it pretty soon. Um, let's pause for a second. I do see a question in the queue there from David. Does the new Cyclone have the close range capability of the Quantum 2 Doppler radar? And will using higher power Cyclone improve its resolution at lower ranges less than 10 miles? Uh, yes and yes to both of your questions. So uh, being a uh, solid state radar with chirp pulse compression, um, it does use some of the same technology that uh, Quantum 2 does. So it has that great short range uh, capability. Um, but because it is a more powerful system, um, it does uh, have um, better resolution really at, at all ranges. It's putting more power out on target than a Quantum 2 is. Um, I think I forgot to mention it um, when I was talking about the different cyclones that are out there. We have uh, three antennas, three foot, four foot, six foot. I know I said that. Uh, we also have them in two power outputs. So there is the Cyclone product with 55 watts of power and then there is Cyclone, oh, Cyclone, Cyclone Pro with 110 watts of transmit power. Uh, so those are your options there. Uh, but yes, the more powerful output uh, does uh, improve uh, resolution um, and it does have that great short range performance. So let's take a look at some of the cool things that not only Cyclone, but a lot of Raymarine radars can do. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is bird mode. This is usually the first thing that comes up when we start talking about open array radars, particularly to anybody down in Florida, um, a lot of anglers down there, but bird mode is used around the world. So the theory behind bird mode in a radar is that uh, the seabirds with their very, very keen eyesight, um, they can see the bait fish under the water. Um, and we know below the bait fish is where the game fish are gonna be. Um, so if we can use the radar to see birds out at a distance, you know, beyond what we can pick up with our own eyes, um, it can get us on the fish pretty quickly. So Cyclone has bird mode. 
um, as well as Magnum, the other open array product in our lineup. Um, our um, HD color ray domes, our RD418 HD and our RD424 HD also have bird mode in them. Now they all do bird mode a little bit differently, um, but it is a pretty effective tool. So in the Magnum product and in the two HD color radome products, um, it has uh, a special algorithm for bird mode. Um, when the radar goes into bird mode there, uh, it basically uh, brings the system sensitivity up very, very high. It also brings up the noise filtering to a very high level. So that we're trying to knock out wave tops, knock out some of the atmospheric particles and other dust and junk in the radar display. And on those systems, the birds typically show up as very small targets, usually uh, towards the bottom of the color scale of the radar, which is usually blue to bluish green. Uh, sometimes they will look like little fuzzy clouds if you get on a particularly big flock of birds. Um, and that's a pretty effective tool, depending on which radar you have. You can see birds anywhere from a quarter mile out to, I'd say, six miles, sometimes a little bit more on a Magnum um, because it's got quite a lot of, bit of power behind it. Um, but it is a, a pretty neat uh, tool and it works very, very well. Now on a Cyclone <clears throat> that also has bird mode, it's actually got two, uh, two bird modes in it. it because it has two modes of operation. Um, Cyclone can operate as a standard or kind of traditional radar in its presentation. Um, it also has uh, Doppler mode in it. Um, so with Doppler mode, it can colorize targets based on their motion. And something that we've noticed in our testing, uh, and I'm gonna show you in a second in video here, is that um, the Doppler mode actually does a pretty good job of seeing birds diving in on the fish. And you're gonna see some interesting color changes on the radar scope when you get birds around on the, the uh, cyclone um, that makes them very easy to spot. Uh, so let me bring my first little video up here. I wanted to show you split chart radar bird non Doppler. Here we go. So let me bring up this video. Mr. Producer Man, if you can share that. So yesterday uh, I did a sea trial down in Connecticut. And um, it was a very brisk day. The things we do for Raymarine Live. It was uh, just um, just above 30 degrees when we got underway. Uh, but we wanted to bring you some fresh information, some great shots uh, from the water. So um, in this first video, and let me back it up just a little bit here, uh, and I'm going to pause it. Um, we are just outside of Groton, Connecticut. Here uh, we are on a uh, pretty good. Uh, ledge area, and there were lots of uh, falsies out there, false albacore, um, and the birds were having a grand old time diving in on the bait um, that uh, was in that area as well. So if we look at this radar image over here on the right, the larger targets are actually other boats uh, that are out there around us. Um, but if you notice, we got some very small uh, specks. Now this is Cyclone in its um, chirp pulse compression, kind of traditional mode, if you will. Um, so this is not doing any particular colorization of the targets that it sees. And we're getting lots of small uh, targets in and around. Let me uh, back this up just a little bit. We'll hit play again. So all of those small contacts are all birds. Um, so you can see it picks them up pretty readily. But what I want to show you is when we switch into Doppler mode, skip ahead here just a little bit. So there's all the birds, regular mode. I go up, touch the switch. And boom, we go into Doppler mode and all of a sudden the birds really pop. And what's cool about the birds is because they're always in motion, um, whether they're coming towards the boat or away the boat, they're in motion. And that's what Doppler mode is all about. It is about, um, change videos on me. Uh, it's all about seeing um, things in motion and colorizing them. So the birds actually play very nicely into that. Um, and I have another video that I want to show you as well get this to cooperate again. We're going to look at this video called Surrounded by Birds in There we go. Let's see if you can bring that one up. There we go. Uh, so once again, at the center of the scope, all of those colorized pink and green targets, with the exception of the very large ones, are birds. So the, the ones that are very blocky, very square, those are all birds. Uh, the red, the pinkish ones are headed towards us. The green ones are headed away from the boat. 
Um, and then the very, very large red and green contacts are actually other boats that are in there. Um, so it is a pretty cool uh, capability. Um, it works exceptionally well. Um, and uh, when Cyclone launches to the public in just a few more weeks, um, we are still doing some development work on it, finishing up the software. That's actually what the delay is and getting these out the door. Um, but uh, day by day, they're just getting better and better. So it's actually very, very exciting to see this coming together. I think when you get it on board your boat, get out on the fishing grounds with it, you're going to be very impressed. So um, what radars have bird mode capability? So Cyclone does. Um, our Magnum open arrays have it. Um, our HD color ray domes also have uh, bird mode in them. So um, you can use that technology on any of those systems. Um, again, slightly different uh, versions of it, uh, but all very capable. Uh, let's see. The next topic I wanted to show you was something called ARPA. ARPA and MARPA. So you may have heard these terms thrown around before. And this is a technology that has been in lots of radar systems for quite a long time. Um, most small boat radars through the years have had something in them called MARPA. MARPA is a miniature automatic radar plotting aid. And what it does is it allows the radar to track targets um, and then calculate collision avoidance information about them. It can figure out another boat's course and speed. It can project where that boat is going to cross your path and then offer advice on um, where the cross is going to happen, what time it's gonna happen. Um, so it allows you to make better decisions as the captain about how you should maneuver to avoid collisions um, with other vessels. Um, there is another version of it in there just called ARPA. They chop the M off the front and call it ARPA. Uh, ARPA is just automated, ra automatic radar plotting aid. Uh, and ARPA is kind of the commercial grade version. So with an ARPA system, the radar can actually automatically acquire targets depending on different types of criteria. So the Cyclone radar actually supports both modes. It has ARPA for fully automatic target acquisition. It also has MARPA where you can manually uh, enter a target uh, in there. Um, when we put a target into track, you're going to see some graphics on the screen. And that is the radar actually engaging with that track, following its video, and doing some calculations for it. So the question you might ask is, all right, does my Green Marine radar have ARPA or MARPA in it? And the answer to that question is yes. Um, pretty much every radar that we have made uh, in the 23 years that I have worked here at Ray Marine all has at least MARPA capability in it, where you can manually acquire a target um, and track it and get all that collision avoidance information. Um, and we've added ARPA in the last couple of years to many different products uh, as well. Um, so there is some level of this capability um, in all of your systems. So let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. So I am going to bring up another video for you. Oh, radar standard ARPA. There we go. So we recorded this again yesterday down in Connecticut. And you can see I have two targets in track. So what we did here is we did a manual acquisition. I simply touched this target with my finger in the pop-up menu said acquire target. And then I went and did that for target number two as well. And the system just continuously uh, updates um, the position of these targets. The blue line extended off the front is the motion vector. So that shows me what direction that vessel is headed in. Um, you can notice here on the scope as well, um, I have uh, what they call an SHM. This, this white line is my ship's heading marker. So that's the way that my boat is pointed according to my compass. Um, you'll also notice that there is a motion vector in here um, extending from the center. And that is actually my course over ground and speed over ground. Because as we know, when you get into wind and current, Although the boat is pointing in one direction, it may not necessarily be going in that direction. So if you're going slowly, if you're getting blown around, if you're getting pushed by the current, um, the direction the boat is pointed does not always equal where it is going. So the radar display actually shows you that uh, as well. So this is an example of the ARPA uh, in action. And let me show you what happens when we start getting into a situation where we're gonna cross paths with another vessel. So the first thing I want to show you is a photo. 
You can just leave this up, Mr. Producer. So here is the uh, a shot from yesterday. Um, this is at the mouth of the Thames River going into Groton, Connecticut. Uh, so those joining us from the UK, this is not your Thames River. This is our Thames River uh, in Connecticut on the coast of New England. And this is one of the ferries that goes back and forth to Long Island. These things go in and out of Groton like clockwork. So there's always one going in, one going out. They go over to Long Island and they haul cars and freight and passengers and all that sort of stuff. And they're great for us whenever we want to do product testing because they do uh, run on a schedule. So we always know when they're coming by. Um, and they make great radar targets and AIS targets as well. So this is the scene. Uh, the ferry is inbound to Groton. It's about to cross the bow of our test boat. So let's see what that looks like on the radar. And that is the ARPA changing course and dangerous target video. Here we go. So when we um, initially uh, started out here, we were just um, drifting along very slowly. Actually, so we we're just kind of motoring along at a pace. Uh, and what we decided to do is we decided to change course uh, to make the ARPA uh, earn its keep. So what you're gonna see happen in a second is we are gonna start changing course to port. You're gonna see the radar spin clockwise as we start turning left. Um, and you're gonna see those tracker graphics on these ferries suddenly uh, change quite a bit. So there's one ferry in this case uh, to our port and here we are starting our turn. And now we wanna call your attention to a bunch of red graphics that are gonna appear in a moment. And what this is, is this is called a CPA and TCPA graphic. So we have turned, and in a moment, one of those other boats is about to turn into the channel. And it's going to change the whole situation here. Come on, video. A couple more sweeps. A couple more sweeps. There we go. You notice the motion vector on target two has changed. And ah, now we have a dangerous MARPA target. So the system has detected that this new scenario of courses and speeds by all of these vessels involved um, is a dangerous situation. It's gonna cross through my predefined danger zone. So what we've got going on here is a projection of this boat's path. And it's telling me that in about three minutes, almost four minutes, um, it is going to intercept my heading right here. Um, so it's gonna show me basically how far uh, he's going to pass ahead of me, um, assuming I maintain course and speed and he maintains course and speed. And then we, we just cancel the target out here. Um, and it tells me how much time it's going to take. Now, the Cyclone radar can do this for up to 50 targets simultaneously. Um, the Magnum radar, the Quantum 2, can do it for 25 uh, targets, uh, as can the... Um, uh, the HD color, uh, 18 and 24 inch open arrays. Um, they can do 25 targets. And then the original quantum and our digital radar scanners, um, they can do 10 targets simultaneously um, in their MARPA system. So some pretty good capability in there across the board on all of those radars. Um, I just want to remind everybody, too, if you have questions along the way, certainly please drop them into the chat. Uh, we are going to break periodically for questions. And if you don't drop questions in, I just have to keep talking and making stuff up as I go. Uh, so do drop your questions in. Uh, the questions are really kind of what power these series and uh, keep it interesting for everybody. So I know I know Bandit Fishing Team, you must have a question. You all, you've always got questions. Drop something in there and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and obviously we're doing radar tonight, but if you have other questions as well, other product related questions, drop them in too. Um, we'll take the on topic questions first, but uh, we can certainly uh, take off topic questions as well. And Tom just dropped a comment in there. And Captain Tom is who I was out with yesterday. We were both freezing our butts off, but it was a good time. Um, and he mentions a heading sensor is required for this. Yes. Um, one of the things that makes ARPA work really well on all these radar systems is if they have access to compass heading. Um, if you have an autopilot on board your boat, you have that compass sensor already. Um, otherwise, you could add a standalone compass sensor. If you don't have an autopilot, you do something like our EV-1 heading sensor, uh, which is our pilot, uh, pilot heading compass, but you can buy it as an individual item and just install it for compass. Um, our AR-200, our augmented reality sensor module, can also provide the compass information needed to power the ARPA and MARPA features. 
I do see a question in there from Peter Benton. Um, let's see what Peter is asking. What are the benefits of upgrading my four foot Magnum radar with dual Axiom Pro XLs? All right. Uh, so your Magnum radar is uh, certainly a very, very capable system. Um, so it has a lot of the capability that Cyclone has. Um, so it is a really good system. So I will say, Peter, I wouldn't be in a rush to, you know, remove that from your boat and get rid of it. Um, but um, if you did want to upgrade to Cyclone, the key things that you're going to pick up, uh, Cyclone has Doppler mode uh, in it. And we're going to look at Doppler mode in a little more detail in just a second. But it is a pretty cool feature. If you find yourself boating in an area where there's a lot of traffic, it makes it easy at a glance to tell what direction uh, people are moving. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, the bird mode in um, Cyclone is uh, kind of the next generation beyond what you have in your Magnum. So it is going to show you some different things and work a little bit differently. Um, so, do you know, do you want to rush out and upgrade it? Um, you know, certainly if you want to, we're, we're happy to sell you a Cyclone. But um, if I were in your position, uh, it sounds like your boat is pretty new. Um, Axiom Pro XL is also pretty new. Um, you know, uh, I, you, got, you got some good hardware there. So uh, take that for what it's worth. So uh, let's take a look at Doppler radar since that came up in the questions and it's actually next in our list. So Doppler radar is a pretty cool technology that has come to the recreational marine space uh, within the last five years or so. Um, our first Doppler product is the Quantum 2 radar, which is over here um, over my shoulder. Um, so that was our first product with Doppler tracking technology in it. And Cyclone has it now as well. Um, so what is Doppler? Um, so if you think back to your middle school uh, physics class, uh, Doppler is the shifting of the frequencies of sound or energy um, as they interact with a moving object. Um, one of the classic uh, examples of Doppler in action that they always cite um, in science books and YouTube videos and everything else is the sound of the approaching train horn, right? So you're standing on the platform at the train station and the engineer lays on the horn and you hear that change in tone of the train horn as it is approaching. It starts to go up in pitch. Um, and then as the train passes you, the tone drops in pitch. Um, well, that is the Doppler effect. What basically happens is those sound waves sort of pile up as they are coming closer to you, and it raises the pitch. And then as they move away, they stretch out a little bit more. Well, when we send energy out from a radar system and we bounce it off an object, we can actually watch uh, for that same change in pitch off of the microwave pulses of the radar. And that enables us to tell if a target is getting closer to us or moving away. So that is what Doppler radar does in a nutshell. Um, what we do is we use a special color palette with Doppler radar to make it very, very intuitive to know what direction things are moving. And let's face it, as boaters out there on the water, what we really want to know is, is, some, is something getting closer to me or is it moving farther away or is it staying the same? Is it not moving, right? So we break things down into three categories. So things that are getting closer to you, the Doppler radar is going to colorize in some shade of red. Things that are moving away from you, it colorizes in a shade of green. And then it'll use a neutral color for everything else. So let me show you a pretty cool Doppler radar video that we got yesterday. And again, this was taken with a Cyclone radar. Uh, I am going to pop over here for a second and pull up. Pull Doppler trails on a fast moving target. All right, here we go. So this is our radar in Doppler mode. And you'll notice I've got a target number one up here. He is moving away from me. He is in green. Target number two is also moving away from me in green. But notice I just got this dangerous target alarm on this target number three. And notice underneath his little uh, ARPA tracker, the actual target itself is pink. Um, so this particular Doppler palette, some of you may not have seen this before. It's relatively new on our systems. Um, if you've upgraded your software recently, you probably have this in there and may not realize it. 
This is called True Color Doppler. So what we're actually doing is we are colorizing outbound targets in bright green. Um, inbound targets are actually pink. And then we're using the kind of traditional radar color palette for the stationary uh, and neutral targets. So they are reds with their blue shading around them. Um, but notice that uh, this fast moving target, as it comes in, uh, here it is again, it is uh, pink because it is inbound. Um, we put it in track with the ARPA and that's the ARPA starting to do its work on it. Um, that ring of little green dots means that it is acquiring. Uh, now it has been acquired, it has been, term been determined to be dangerous. So that's why the ring has turned solid. Um, it is red and it is flashing to call attention to it. There is its CPA. Uh, but watch what happens as this boat passes through the center of the scope. So you'll notice it stays pink um, right up until it basically gets alongside us. And then it's going to go to neutral color, which in this case is this neutral, um, neutral palette red. And then it's going to go to green as it comes out the other side. So there's a moment in time with every passing vessel where it reaches a point called apogee, where it is neither getting closer nor farther away. It just hovers there for a few seconds in time. Uh, and it'll drop to a neutral color and then it'll change to the outbound color, which in a second would be green. Uh, so this is a pretty good example of Doppler uh, in action on some targets. And you can see some other ones out there as well uh, out on the open water. Another thing that's going on in this image is we turned on something called trails. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about trails in a second. But what the trails basically do is they create a little wake behind targets that are in motion. And what's cool about trails you can use those on a non-Doppler radar as well to help identify things in motion. If you look at this target number three, you can see he's leaving a pretty good size wake behind him. We have the trail set at 30 seconds. So we're getting 30 seconds of wake history behind anything in motion. Um, and so we can see that streak behind him that tells us he's also moving in addition to the Doppler capability. Um, I see another question has come in. Let's take a peek. What do we got here? From Peter, on airplane radar, we use Doppler to see the intensity of precipitation. Does the Quantum 2 Doppler have that feature? Um, so the Quantum 2 Doppler and the Cyclone Doppler do have a weather mode in them, but it is a little bit different from Doppler on an airplane radar. Um, so we shift into weather mode on our systems um, basically to change the way that we filter out noise out of the system. Um, in order to see weather and precipitation on a Raymarine uh, marine Doppler ra radar system, we need to allow a little bit of noise that we would normally reject into the system. So that's what we're doing um, when we go into weather mode on our system. Um, you will see some intensity in the colorization, not so much the colorization, but um, really the density of the target, the leading edge of a squall coming in, for example, is going to be very, very solid where the trailing edge behind it is going to start to have more fuzzy features to it. Um, so that does give some indication of the intensity, but it's not quite like it is in your airplane. So hopefully that kind of answers your question. And we'll look at some more Doppler stuff in a second. I think we might have something coming up that will help uh, with that too. So the next radar feature I want to talk about that is available on uh, many Raymarine radar systems is something called dual range. So there are times when you are running uh, at night or running fast and you have your radar on and there could be advantages to looking out very far away from your boat while at the same time also looking at your radar very close to the boat. So imagine if you will that you are uh, maybe tracking some weather. Uh, at long range, you know, watching a line of squalls out there and trying to keep an eye on where, what direction they are going. Well, at the same time, you're trying to get out of the harbor and you're trying to dodge traffic and dodge lobster pots and rocks and anything else that is there on the radar scope. Well, dual range is a way that you can do that. Um, so what uh, radar systems uh, support dual range? Uh, well, Cyclone does. Um, our HD color uh, open arrays uh, support dual range mode. That's the uh, 18 and 24 inch uh, RD um, 418 and 424 HD. Um, the Magnum uh, systems also support dual range. So what does a dual range radar look like? Well, there's two different ways that we can display it depending on which radar platform you have. 
Um, so let me call up my first uh, dual range video here. And it is called Radar Dual Range Split Side by Side. Here we go. So this was recorded with our Cyclone system. Um, but this is showing um, similar or one of the modes that is also supported in Magnum and in the HD color radon. So this is side by side dual range. Um, so basically you can create two um, adjacent uh, radar windows. They can be on the same MFD like we're doing here. They could also be on two separate MFDs. Um, but within the menu structure of each, you can designate one to be a long range sweep and one to be a short range sweep. And you have independent control uh, over those uh, two windows. So this is kind of a cool way to have um, my left panel here, I'm scanning out to a quarter mile. Um, and on my right panel, I'm scanning out to um, a full mile. Um, and you can see there are there is some overlap. Um, if you look at this little kind of T-shaped uh, jetty that is coming up or dock that's coming up, you can also see it on the uh, right-hand panel as well. Now, this is a cyclone radar. One of the interesting things that cyclone can do is that it can actually simultaneously scan in standard mode and Doppler mode. Um, so in the last couple of frames of this, and let me advance it a little bit and I'm gonna pause it just so it holds there for a second. Um, my left-hand pane is still in short range standard chirp pulse compression. And I get a nice clean image of uh, these are actually, I think, a pair of gated buoys that we just came through on either side of the boat. Um, again, we have this dock uh, that was coming up on our port side. Um, on the right-hand window, we are at a longer range scale and we are in Doppler mode. So there's that same uh, dock and jetty system sticking out. You can see the indications of the two buoys that are alongside the boat. Um, keep in mind, this is a one-mile scale over here, so those buoys are a lot smaller in the big... Uh, scheme of this picture, but we also have an inbound target that has not yet made it onto the short range scope, and we have an outbound target up here. So we have one in pink, one in green. Um, this is Doppler mode on the right. This is um, standard chirp pulse compression on the left. So it's kind of a cool way to visualize uh, things and use your different modes in different ways. Um, so, and that is something that is unique to Cyclone being able to do uh, Doppler and um, standard chirp pulse compression simultaneously. Um, let's see here. Uh, I see another question from Peter. He's got some good ones tonight. Any benefits of the new radar at high speeds? 115 knots plus. Wow, that is pretty high speed. So um, the Cyclone radar is uh, tested to be able to uh, start up in 100 knots of wind speed. Um, so it does have a very aerodynamic shape. Um, so it is designed to cut through the wind. Um, that shape is also part of the antenna design as well. We use a slightly different type of antenna on a cyclone than we have used on past uh, models. Um, this is called a um, uh, whoop, total brain fart. Uh, well, I'll come back to that. <laughs> anyway, it's a different antenna design than we've used before. We've used a uh, a patch array antenna on prior models. Uh, this is a little bit more sophisticated design, which is smaller. It gives us a little bit better beam shaping. Um, at 115 knots of wind, I'm not sure what's gonna happen there, Peter. Uh, we've tested it up to 100. Uh, I would suspect maybe if you already had it running, it would probably keep going, uh, but I don't know the answer to that. I'll try to find out and uh, update you with an answer uh, in the comments. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about uh, is target trails. And we kind of alluded to this uh, in an earlier scene. And target trails is actually a really neat feature. I'm a big fan of target trails. Um, and it is something that just about all of our radars can do, um, but not a lot of people take advantage of it. Um, so I'm gonna bring up another video for you. And we're gonna do relative motion, true trails with ARPA. So this is actually um, the similar scene to what we were looking at earlier with that fast moving vessel coming in. Um, though this time we're not in Doppler mode, we're in standard mode because I wanted to show you that the radars in standard mode can do this too. So Cyclone can do this, Magnum can do this, uh, the HD color domes can do this, Quantum, uh, Quantum 2, uh, even the HD digital uh, radars can all do this if you turn trails on. 
Um, and where do you find this? Well, it is in this menu over here called Targets. So you go into the Targets menu and then touch Target Settings. And right there you have Trails. So we can turn them on or turn them off. And you can actually set it for how long you want the trail behind the targets to be. So yesterday we were using 30 seconds as our trail reference. But if you're out on wide open water, maybe you're doing a, a, a big crossing across the ocean, um, you might set that even longer. You could set that to 60 seconds or 90 seconds or two minutes um, just to really establish um, what is in motion out there. It really helps to call attention to other vessels, particularly when you get to longer range scales too. Um, and some of these radars have really some tremendous range capability uh, on them. Um, so if you're using them uh, in long range mode, uh, try turning the trails on. Um, it is a pretty cool thing to see. Um, one thing I will say with target trails, they work a heck of a lot better if you have the compass sensor on your system because the compass stabilizes our radar display. Um, and you can tell on a Raymarine Axiom system whether or not you have compass data fed to your radar uh, by looking at this outer ring. Um, the outer range ring, if it's marked with compass bearings, like this one is, numerical compass bearings, that means it is seeing your compass. If all you have are hash marks, but no numbers on the hash marks, it is not seeing your compass. Um, but when everything is stabilized like this, you get a nice smooth presentation. Um, you get very clean, crisp trails, and it makes your ARPA uh, work better too. Okay, um, so uh, target trails, as I mentioned, you can do this on just about every uh, radar that we make. Um, and then we've had that feature in there for quite a while. So definitely check it out. It is inside the radar menu. You'll hit, hit the menu, go to targets, and uh, then you will see the option in there under target settings to turn on the target trails. All right, um, so one more topic I wanted to talk about, and this is another one that is something that is in all of our systems, um, and that is color palettes. Um, so we often look at different color palettes in our sonar system. So whether you're looking at traditional down-looking sonar or side vision or down vision, there's different color palettes you can choose. And what it really does is it kind of helps you to manage the ambient light conditions and you know how easily you can see things on your screen. Well, the radar actually has color palettes in it too. Um, and I don't think a lot of people know they're there. Almost every boat I get on, they always have the default color palette running. But there are some other options on there that are pretty good. And let me just kind of show you what some of the options are. We're going to bring another video up. And this one is just purely a uh, color palette demonstration. But this will show you where they are located. All right. So we are in the radar main menu. So you're with your radar running, touch menu up on the top right corner. Go down to settings, which is the gears icon, and then that presentation tab. And right here, you can see a color palette. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six color palettes uh, in there. Um, there, this one here is called Classic, that kind of mimics um, our older analog radars. Night vision gives you a nice green on black, which is easy on the eyes at night. Responder is a special palette. We originally built it for the New York Fire Department. Um, the Responder palette does some special things for if echo cancellation in noisy environments, which is pretty cool. Uh, the bold color palette is the default. Um, so it uses red as its primary color with yellows and blues for the secondaries. Um, and then we have two uh, professional palettes and they allow a little bit more secondary color into the display. Um, one of them is red based, one of them is yellow based, but you'll find them all right there. Just a couple of other cool things that are right there in that menu while it's up on the screen too. You can turn the range rings on or off. So if you're a range ring person, you can turn them on. You can also turn the labels for the rings on. Um, if you're not into range rings, you can shut them off or you can just shut off the labels. And down in the bottom right corner of the screen, it always tells you the range scale you have selected on the radar and then it shows you the ring interval. So right now we're on a two mile range scale and I realize our live stream graphic is kind of sitting on top of this, but right here you can see we're at two nautical miles is the selected range and a half mile is the range ring uh, interval. That's always available to you there. Um, so there is quite a bit of customization you can do uh, on these systems. I encourage you to dive into the radar menus, take a look at what all is in there. And again, really the best time to play with these features is on a nice day. When you got one of those nice blue sky days, it's calm. Maybe you're just sitting on anchor. 
um, you know, take five or 10 minutes and play with some of these features on your radar, see what they do. Um, there's nothing quite like being able to see a target on the radar and then look through the windscreen and see it with your eyes to understand uh, what it is that you are looking at. And I think we might have time for just a couple more questions. We're coming up on the end of the hour. So if you have any more questions, do please drop them in there. Uh, from Peter Benton. I know Peter has a beautiful formula. He sent me some photos of it a while back. So thank you, Peter, for those. And uh, let's see, would be cool if range could auto shift based on speed, short range for idle through a harbor and then increase and decrease on speed. Um, that is a very interesting idea, Peter. And it's something that I have given some thought to as well. And I did actually put that in, I think based off another, might've been one of your comments earlier. Um, I fed it back to our engineering team to see if that's something we could do, not only in radar, but also on the chart. Um, in the chart plotter, there is a mode called uh, it's actually called auto range. <laughs> um, and it will auto shift the range of the chart display, though it doesn't do it based on boat speed. It does it on the distance to a waypoint that is in track. So as you are farther from the waypoint, it zooms out. As you get closer to your destination, it starts to zoom in on it. Uh, and then it rescales as you pass one waypoint and advance to the next. Uh, but that is certainly something that we could uh, put in as a suggestion. And I encourage anybody that has product ideas, suggestions, maybe there's something you really want to have. Maybe there's something that drives you crazy. Uh, drop it into the comments. Uh, let us know your thoughts on it. I too try to feed back everything back to our engineering team. And they actually love the feedback uh, from all you guys that are using the products every day. Uh, we want to make them do what you want them to do. Peter says, boaters want radar off in harbor, but my understanding is new radar technology isn't causing any radiation issues, or are they worried about interference? Um, that's a great question, and this is one that we get quite a lot. And so let's talk first about the energy that comes out of the radar. Um, your radar system uses a pulsed microwave energy. Um, so usually when people think radar, uh, one of the things they compare it to is like their microwave oven in their kitchen. Um, and though they both use microwave technology, um, they broadcast that technology a bit different. So a microwave oven, um, when you turn it on, and, and most microwave ovens, for example, are like 1,000 watts of power, um, sometimes 1,200 watts of power. You, you have a commercial grade one, maybe 2,000 watts of power. Um, but they are what they call continuous wave radiation. So when you hit the go button on your microwave oven to warm up that burrito, um, it is blasting that burrito with a continuous uh, 1,000 watts of power. Um, and that continuous wave microwave energy actually creates heating in the cells of whatever objects uh, are exposed uh, to it. Uh, and that is why your food in a microwave kind of cooks uh, from the inside out. Um, and it's because that microwave energy actually accelerates the cellular action, it generates heat, um, and it cooks from the inside out. Now, when we go to a marine radar system, we're doing something a little bit different. We are broadcasting with pulsed uh, microwave energy. So your radar actually pulses thousands of times per second. It turns on and turns off, turns on and turns off, turns on and turns off. The times that it is pulsing, it is sending energy out. And the times that it switches off, it's actually listening for the echoes coming back. So because it is a pulsed system, what actually happens is we never get to the point where we're putting enough energy on target to heat it up. We never get that cellular action going. Um, the breaks in the, in the uh, pulse uh, are enough um, that it's not doing any heating of any kind. Now, another thing that has changed um, with quantum and with now cyclone is the solid state radar technology. So the Magnum radars are HD color radars. Those are magnetron based systems. Um, they have either 4,000 or 12,000 watts of power, but it is pulsed power. Um, so they are very, very safe um, to get into a danger zone with one of those radars. You have to get so close to it that the radar itself is gonna swing around and hit you in the head. So it's probably more of a, a physical issue than a microwave energy issue. Though we do recommend with any radars, you do want to keep it mounted, you know, above head level, above eye levels, you know, above the heads of the passengers in your boat anyway. Um, but when we get to one of these um, solid state radar products, their power output is much, much lower. So where a magne uh, magnetron, uh, say a magnum system with 
4,000 watts of power output. Um, the equivalent in a cyclone is a solid state 55 watt uh, product. So much, much lower power output anyway. Um, but they are very, very safe. Um, there is sort of, a, I guess, a misunderstanding out there about what level of radiation comes out of these types of radars. Um, you know, as a courtesy, sure, when you get into the marina, you know, secure your radar, stop it from transmitting it. I guess it gives people peace of mind, uh, but it's really not doing any uh, any damage to anything. And I think that basically brings us to the end of the hour. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight to learn all about cyclone and radar technology for every boater. I hope you did find some tips and some features in here, some things that you can try on your own uh, radar systems when you get that out there on the water. I encourage you again to, uh, to use your radar every time you go out. Don't save it just for the dark or the fog. Uh, use it every time you go out. It's a great tool, something you really want to get comfortable and familiar with. So with that, we will sign off for tonight. I encourage you to drop comments and feedback into YouTube or Facebook or whatever platform you are watching this on. I will be in there tomorrow throughout the weekend and into next week, also answering questions and comments. So those of you who are not watching this live, but watching the recorded version, I want to answer your questions too. So definitely drop them in and uh, you will get a response. Thank you all for coming out. And we will be back in not too long with the next installment of Raymarine Live. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.